Hey, hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our medical mnemonics playlist. Today's topic is digoxin mnemonic. As you know, digoxin belongs to a class of medications known as cardiac glycosides, aka digitalis. This digitalis has three subtypes three members in that group. Member number one, digoxin. Member two, digitoxin. And member three is wabane. Hi, Medicosa, so why do doctors give digoxin? Two reasons. Number one, to boost your cardiac contractility, to make your heart contract harder. And this is important. Why? Because some patients have congestive heart failure. When your heart fails to pump, it's time to boost the pump by giving digoxin. Reason number two, digoxin can increase the refractory period at the atrioventricular node. What the flip does that mean? It means it delays the conduction in the AV node, which can lower your heart rate. Oh, so if the patient suffers from palpitations, arrhythmia, especially tachyarrhythmia, such as supraventricular tachycardia, we can give digoxin to slow the heart down. So digoxin has two purposes. I can boost cardiac contractility or I can delay cardiac conductivity. That was neat. Okay, medicosis. Since digoxin boosts cardiac contractility, we can use it in congestive heart failure, right? That's true. But hey, medicosis, we have two types of heart failure. There is failure during systole and there is failure of diastole. Which one should we use digoxin in? You should use digoxin in systolic failure. When the heart fails to contract, fails systole. Because when the heart fails contraction, it's time to give a drug to boost contraction. Oh, that actually makes sense. Conversely, what kinds of supraventricular arrhythmias do we use in? We have atrial fibrillation, we have atrial flutter, we have paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Can we use digoxin in these arrhythmias? The answer is yes. How about Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which is an AVRT? No, never use digoxin in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Why not, medicosis? Well, let's go back to square one and understand what Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is. In WPW, you have an accessory pathway, which is not normal, because normally the impulse should start here in the pacemaker, which is the SA node, the impulse should go to the AV node, and then the AV node will give it to both ventricles. But in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, we will bypass the normal path and the impulse will go from the SA node straight to the ventricles. This accessory pathway is faster than the natural path. Oh, that's dangerous. That's why it's a tachyarrhythmia, because it's faster. All right, why can't I use digoxin then? Because digoxin delays the AV node, which makes it even slower than the faster accessory path. And the accessory fibers are getting the impulse even faster from the SA node to the ventricle, you will worsen the tachyarrhythmia, you freaking doofus. So if the patient has Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, you are not allowed to give any drug that slows the AV node. Okay, medicosis, tell me what are these drugs that slow the AV nodal conduction and therefore contraindicated in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Are you ready? A, B, C, D. A, adenosine is contraindicated. B, beta blockers. The C, calcium channel blockers. And the D is the freaking digoxin. Do not use any of these in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. What should I use then? Slow down the ventricles. Oh, whether you're coming on the normal path or the abnormal path, I can slow the ventricles either way. Yes, how do I slow the ventricles? Class 1A or class 3 antiarrhythmics. Sodium channel blockers or potassium channel blockers. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Let's talk about the action potential inside the ventricle muscles. All right, I did not say inside the SA node or AV node. I said inside the ventricle muscles. All right, you have phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three, back to phase four on the floor. 
who is responsible for phase zero rapid sodium influx into the cardiac myocyte. What does digoxin do? Digoxin will slow this down. Decrease sodium entry? That's true. Decrease the slope of the action potential? Yes. Slope of phase zero will go down, less depolarization, less activation of the ventricles. However, when you decrease the conduction velocity too much, this can increase my risk of re-entrant arrhythmias. Especially if digoxin works on some of the fibers, leaving others uninhibited. Now take a deep breath because we are switching topics. Now I'll tell you why digoxin boosts cardiac contractility. Because digoxin inhibits the sodium potassium primary ATPase pump. When you block this, sodium will not leave and potassium will not enter. Okay. When sodium cannot leave, where do you think sodium accumulates? It accumulates inside. All right, you have too much positive inside. All right, if there's too much sodium inside, do you think the secondary active transporter will work? No, for two reasons. Number one, secondary was dependent on the primary. You inhibited the primary. Of course, the secondary will suffer. Reason number two, you already have too much sodium in because you inhibited the primary. When you have too much sodium in, I cannot pump more sodium in and therefore I cannot pump calcium out either because this exchanger is also toast. When calcium cannot leave, calcium will stay inside the cardiac myocyte. Hashtag calcium induced calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium will make actin and myosin hug and kiss each other Hashtag increased cardiac contractility. And now to my digoxin mnemonic. Digoxin, digitalis, digitoxin, all of them have the D in them. So what's the mechanism of action? I destroy the sodium potassium ATPase. I destroy the primary pump. And that's why the secondary exchanger is not going to work either. All right. What's going to happen? I am going to deprive calcium from its ability to leave the cardiac myocyte. Calcium will stay inside the myocyte, driving and boosting the cardiac contractility. Okay. I also delay the conduction in the AV node. I slow the heart rate. I decrease the ventricular rate. But be very careful in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome because I stopped and slowed down the normal path even more, leaving you only with the crazy fast accessory pathway. I am a drug that requires loading dose. I have a large volume of distribution and that's why I'm easily displaced by other drugs because I bind hard to plasma proteins and all of your tissue proteins for that matter. So other drugs can kick my butt. I have a delayed onset of action. Therefore, if the patient has acute heart failure, oh, I'm gonna give this oxygen now, I'm gonna save his life. It's not gonna happen. I am delayed slowed action. I'm good for chronic use, but not for the acute one. What should I do then? Give dobutamine. Dobutamine is fast. Does digoxin lower mortality for CHF patients? The answer is not. How about lowering mortality in patients with MI? The answer is also no. It improves symptoms, but it does not lower mortality and it does not increase survival or longevity. Digoxin is a dangerous drug in general. Why? Narrow therapeutic window with low safety margin particularly if you have Walt parkinson white syndrome. Side effects of digoxin, disorientation, visual disturbance, and you'll see yellow-green halos, and as you know, green in French is verd, in German it's vert. That's why we have Billy Verdin, that's why we have very dense group of streptococci. See, medicine makes so much sense. I can also depress your ST segment and decrease the QT interval on EKG. All right, medicosis, my patient is suffering from digoxin toxicity. How can I save the day? Give the antidote. What's the antidote for digoxin? Digibind, which is going to bind digoxin. These are antibodies against digoxin. Anti-digoxin fragment antibodies. Oh, and when you bind digoxin, it will not be able to work and you will decrease its toxicity until your body eliminates the drug. Okay, Medicosis, you told us that we should use it for CHF. Which type of CHF? Only where there is decreased ejection fraction. This is the systolic failure. But you should not use digoxin if the ejection fraction is preserved. Hi, Medicosis, there were so many Ds in your slide. Can you just summarize it? Tell us what's the most important. All right, it destroys the sodium potassium ATPase and the secondary will not work. It drives the pump forwards, i.e. increases contractility. It delays the AV nodal conduction, i.e. decreases conductivity and decreases heart rate. It does not lower mortality, 
to treat its toxicity give me DigiBind. Today's lecture was just a sample of what you can expect when you download my Cardiac Pharmacology course, 50 videos that will teach you about digoxin, diuretics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal, antihypertensives, and antihyperlipidemic medications. I also have a brand new toxicology course talking about all kinds of antidotes also available to download at medicosisperfectionalis.com. You can also download the coronary of all of my vessels, the king, the crown, my acid-base imbalance course. And for a limited time, you can get 40% discount towards any course on my website by using discount code TOXIDROME. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.